I mean, I've talked about this unit before, um, and I always promised I was going to show you guys the inner workings of this thing, and I think I'll do that in this video, and I also want to add some lights to the inside of it to light it up. This is a 200 disc CD changer. It's a Sony. Now, Sony do have a little light in there. It, you, you can't really see it from this angle, but you can see the disc lighting up. They're very dim. It's a yellow light. I'm going to put some a little more prominent lights in the front here. When I open it up, you'll see that it holds 200 discs. So basically, you just take your favorite disc and you load it. Label side facing right into the carousel and then any of the 200 discs can be randomly accessed as can any of the tracks on here. Everything can be organized into, I think it's got eight blocks of discs so you can build playlists based on the disc locations. I've never gone to that uh, trouble. Whenever I've used this thing, I've just put it in random playback. It will provide days, weeks of music without hearing the same track over and over again. Basically, once you've loaded the disc, you close it up. It'll make a full rotation and count all the discs that are in it and, and then load the disc. Let me get the top off this thing so you can actually see this thing in operation. Now, I always wanted one of these units when they were in production, but I could never justify the kind of money that they cost to buy one. So I never bothered to buy one myself. And how I ended up getting this unit was um, a customer at the shop that I worked at had bought this thing. And it was too much for him. It was overkill. So he came up, he came in one day and he says, I'd like to uh, trade this in, you know, for a five disc changer. And I, I said to him, hey, I have a real nice five disc one. I have the ES five disc changer. He says, you want to trade? So I said, sure. And I ended up with this nice unit. Let's take a look at how this machine chucks and unchucks the discs. So here's a close up of the CD mechanism. You'll see it's got a chucking arm here. And there are adjustments down here that are accessed actually through this hole here. If you need to make adjustments, you put your screwdriver through there and you can adjust this. There's a screw on the end of here which adjusts the actual disc chucking mechanism. I'm not going to adjust it because I don't have a problem with this one and I don't want to create a problem. Over here we have a photo diode and a photo detector. And what that does is as the disc rotates, it's counting all the discs. So it knows the positions of each disc and how many discs are in it. So when I close the door, what's going to happen is it's going to rotate and it's going to see how many discs are in this thing. Now if I, if I want to play this thing, if I just want to put, oh, there, see it just chucked the discs for me there. If I want to put this thing at random, for example, and uh, I'll put it into, I'll put it into shuffle play. Here we go. And if I hit play, you'll see it's going to chuck the disc back in. Rotate, find another disc. It's going to grab the disc, load the disc, and start playing it. I don't have it hooked up to my amplifier here. And you can see there's the laser just moved out to start playing a track because I'm playing a track at random. If I select the next disc, it's going to retract the laser, place the disc back in the carousel, switch to another disc. It's quite the system. Let's get a, a look at this little close-up of the actual mechanism and operation. So as you see, this, this arm here, this is actually a disc spreader. What it does is before it chucks the disc, it actually opens the discs up like that so that the arm can grab a disc this is a 200 disc changer. Sony actually made one that held 300 discs, and I even think they had a 400 disc uh, changer as well, but this is a 200 disc. But let's watch this thing in operation here. I'm just gonna, I gotta hold the camera steady by hand because I, I can't get in with my tripod close enough with this thing, I'm just too high. So let's just hit our disc exchange. You'll see.
grabs the disc, holds the disc in place. The laser moves out and it starts playing. Once again, we change this again. But I think this thing is so cool. It's just like a Wurlitzer for the uh, the vinyl. Works just like the old Wurlitzers. Or the Seabird uh, jukeboxes. Some of them were linear where they had all the discs in a rack and the rack actually moved back and forth. Other ones had the, the record player mechanism and moved back and forth. The older ones would actually pick a record up and turn it and play it horizontally, but the later generation ones actually played the record vertically like this place. But it's just a real cool, I mean, I love this thing. It's, it's just so so neat. So what I want to do, I'd like to actually, I'd like to get a, a, a clear uh, plexiglass cabinet made for it, just so that it could be displayed in my equipment rack and you can actually see this thing working because I think it's just so cool just to sit and watch this thing as it's doing its thing. We'll get a look from the other side here as well. The biggest problem we had with these units in all the years that I serviced these things, the biggest problem we have with these, well, we get the odd spindle motor that would fail and we get the odd laser pickup, but most of the problems here with these units were customer caused. You can't move these things when they're full of discs because as you can see, well, the discs could fall out. There's nothing to hold them in place. You have to be really, really careful if you're going to move these things when they're loaded with discs. That was the biggest problem we found, is that people would pick them up and they'd go to move them from one room to another and they'd turn it over on its side or lift it up and we'd end up with all the discs spilled. And then of course, because people weren't smart, they'd plug them in not knowing that the discs had spilled and the machine would start spinning around and you'd have discs that were partially in, in, in their holder and not and then you'd end up with discs jammed in here and you'd have pieces, I'd open the things up and there'd be like 50 CDs all smashed to pieces inside them and all the pieces would come out. Well then of course you knew what was going to happen. You'd have an irate customer who was demanding that Sony or whoever replace all of their discs. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars people would be claiming saying well this thing broke all my discs I want all my discs replaced. And it's no wonder the manufacturers stopped making these things because, uh, I mean, they were great, but uh, the problem was trying to educate the customer as to what you can and can't do with them was, uh, was like a little bit like herding sheep. And we, and we used to see the same ones come in. The five disc units were a little different. People would have them loaded with five discs and they'd pick them up and move them. And they'd have discs flying around off the tray. But at least with a five disc unit, you're only going to wreck maybe a few of the discs. Something like this can be a real disaster for someone moving it uh, without emptying it. And it takes a long time to take these discs out. You're there for a, a long time to take out 200 discs and put them away 
and load them up. Believe me, I've done it. It, it. You know, it takes a good half an hour to take out all the discs and put them all away one at a time. Now, if we look down here, you'll see that they, the drive belt is actually a toothed belt. It's a timing belt that controls the mechanism. So that's never going to wear out. But they're also in the bottom down here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a little switch. Let's see if I can focus the camera and it's right down there. That little blue switch. Okay, that is a switch that it tells the mechanism and I'm going to activate this thing so you can see it operating. This tells the mechanism the position of the mechanism. You see? And those little blue switches get dirty. The contacts get dirty. The symptom is constantly loading and unloading. It'll go from one extreme to the other. It'll load, it'll unload. It'll load, it'll unload without actually going into the play cycle. If you have one of these machines that's doing that, where the mechanism is chucking a disc and then unchucking a disc, and chucking a disc and unchucking a disc, take that switch out and either replace it or get in there with some cleaner and clean it. That is a known issue on these machines. Other than that, one mechanical switch Everything else on this machine is optical. The disc sensing is optical. So if it doesn't find a disc, it could be this optical sensor here is bad. And that's causing it to not detect discs. But there's also another one underneath here. There's another sensor that reads the actual disc position. So if one of the optical sensors goes bad, this will spin back and forth, but it won't find a disc. It'll just keep searching back and forth. That's an optical sensor, but if it chucks and unchucks, it's going to be that switch that goes bad. They're pretty reliable. We don't have a lot of issues with that. A more common would be either a mechanical problem going out of an alignment. If it's dropping a disc, that's where you adjust this uh, adjustment that adjusts the actual pickup arm and um, or if it's skipping it's either going to be the optical pickup is bad or the spindle motor has gone bad these units are pretty reliable though because they're operating in the vertical uh, disc operation as opposed to horizontal the normal CD player the weight of the disc on the spindle will eventually wear the bearing out at the bottom of the motor and cause the motor height to drop slightly. This one being vertical, there's no weight on the bearing itself. I'm not saying that the bearing can't wear out, it certainly can after many, many, many years of use, but it's not as common as it was on other types of players that use these cheap uh, little DC motors. Okay, I've dimmed down the lights. I've changed the lights from the yellow lights that it had to nice white lights now. And that actually looks quite nice. If I kill all the lights in here, except for one little work light, see how this looks. Now this before had yellow lights in it, it now has white LEDs. That actually looks quite nice. It's not overkill, but you can see all the discs. So there's my uh, 200 disc changer, ready to go back together, go back into service. And I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. As I say, I changed out the lights that had three uh, yellow LEDs. So I've changed it to warm white that I think look a little better than the yellow color. Some of these units had blue LEDs in it. When, when blue LEDs were the big rage, of course, everybody had to put blue lights in it. And I just, I just hated anything with blue lights. I don't know what it is about blue LEDs, but... All the companies got on the bandwagon, blue LED this, blue LED that, and I think they just look so tacky. Um, but the white ones, I think, actually make it look a little distinguished, make it look cool, and it'll look really nice when I get it back into my uh, audio cabinet. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one.